Thanks for tuning in again this week, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the second half of the book of Zechariah, which is composed of two oracles. These oracles explain the end of the age and the return of the Lord. The first oracle is Zechariah chapters 9 through 11. The second oracle is Zechariah chapters 12 through 14. Today we will conclude the first oracle as we study Zechariah chapters 10 and 11. Last week we learned in Zechariah 9 that God will save his people. Now in chapter 10, we get some of the details on how he saves his people. Then in chapter 11, we see two shepherds. The first shepherd, Israel rejects the Lord Jesus, and then sadly, they willingly receive the worthless shepherd. Stay tuned. Welcome to Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. The world has entered into a time of paradigm shift when everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Signs and wonders, miracles and healings attest to this truth. It is the time of the coming of the Lord. Join Teresa as we discuss how to prepare our hearts and loved ones in understanding the end of the age. I'm Teresa Garcia. Thanks for tuning in again this week, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue in our series, Zechariah, the End Time Prophet. Let's open now to Zechariah chapter 10. Now, the first seven verses are regarding blessing Israel, and then uh, verses 8 through 12 are talking about gathering them in, bringing them back to the land. Heavenly Father, as we study the blessings of Israel, which we really see going on even now, we give you thanks for every word in the book of Zechariah, which is so accurate, and we marvel that it was written 2,500 years ago about the times we are living in right now. Grace us to bless your Jewish people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's begin now with the blessings on Israel, which are verses 1 through 7. The first one is actually talking about natural rain, we get that from the end of the verse. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. And so that's good news, rain in the tribulation, because we remember that the two witnesses call a drought for some areas. Now the second verse is going to set up the third verse, and it's referring to worshiping idols. For the idols speak delusions, the diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore the people wend their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. And so how do you solve the problem of not having a shepherd? Verse 3. My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the goat herds. For the Lord of, Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his royal horse in the battle. Now, we're going to let Mike Bickle explain the next verse for us because it's a little bit complex. He's talking here about the Messiah. From him comes the cornerstone, from him the ten peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler together. The cornerstone, cornerstone unites two walls at the corner. Such a leader brings unity to society. The ten peg holds the tent in place, even in the pressure of a storm. The battle bow speaks of military leadership in the end times. The ruler is a Hebrew word that speaks of a strong, determined leader. So we've just discussed agricultural blessing in verse 1. That was rain, new leadership for the house of Judah in verses 2 and 3. Now we are going to be discussing military leaders 
the Jewish military is called the Israeli Defense Force, or the IDF. And they are going to be a big blessing during the tribulation, and they are going to be very strong. This is a repeating theme in the book of Zechariah, and I love these verses. Let's listen now, uh, first of all, to the verses about governmental blessings in verses 5 and 6. They shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. They shall fight because the Lord is with them, and the riders on her horses shall be put to shame. I will strengthen the house of Judah, that is the two southern tribes, and I will save the house of Joseph, ten northern tribes. I will bring them back because I have mercy on them. They shall be as though I had not cast them aside, for I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. So we see a powerful military, which, by the way, Israel already has. Uh, when Yasser Arafat began the Intifada in the year 2000, which was the terrorism, he did it for this reason. He said, quote, we cannot defeat them in war. The same will be true uh, during the tribulation. Let's listen to another verse about a powerful Israeli military in Zechariah 9.13. We talked about this verse last week. For I have bent Judah my bow and fitted the bow with Ephraim and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. But my personal favorite verse about the powerful Israeli military during the tribulation is in Zechariah chapter 12. Let's listen. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like who? Like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. Now we go to the second part of Zechariah chapter 10, beginning in verse 8, we talk about the regathering of the Jews to Israel. Of course, this is already happening. I will whistle for them and gather them. I will for I will redeem them, and they shall increase as they once increased. I will sow them among the peoples, and they shall remember me in far-off countries. They shall live together with their children, and they shall return. Now let's listen to David Barron on that. He says this. Uh, by the way, remember that he wrote a hundred years ago. Just as the scattering of Israel was literal, so the gathering will also be literal. In a yet future nationally restored and converted Israel, which shall yet be the center of the kingdom of God and of his Christ and the channel of blessing to all the nations of the earth. So he was looking for toward the establishment of Israel. We know it's already happened in our time. Next, we get one of many prophecies about Assyria and Egypt. I'm happy to tell you that Assyria and Egypt are not goat nations, but they will survive into the millennium. And we use, quote that often in Isaiah 19, the final verses. But today we will hear about uh, the Lord bringing his people out of those nations. I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon until no more room is found for them. Now in the next verse, we find out that a river is going to dry up. Uh, some scholars say it's the Nile. Some say it's the Euphrates. Well, you might know that the Euphrates does dry up. That's in the book of Revelation. So let's listen. He shall pass through the sea with affliction and strike the waves of the sea. All the depths of the river shall dry up. 
then the pride of Assyria, that's the Antichrist, shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. So let's go ahead and listen to the Euphrates River dry up in Revelation 16. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. However, the Nile could also dry up. The Nile has been severely mismanaged and manipulated by engineers for decades, and it could also dry up. We'll have to wait and see. Now, verse 12. So I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, says the Lord. So now let's uh, listen to a summary of the first oracle by um, David Barron. I'm sorry, by Mike Bickle. Zechariah 9, Israel will be delivered. Zechariah 10, Israel will be blessed. Verses 1 through 7, Israel will be gathered. Verses 8 through 12. In Zechariah 11, Israel will be judged and deceived. In part 1, verses 1 through 3, we see the judgment on the land. In part 2, verses 4 through 14, we see rejection of the good shepherd. And then in verses 15 through 17, we see Israel oppressed by the worthless shepherd. So let's listen now in uh, Zechariah chapter 11 and verses 1 through 3. Open your doors, O Lebanon, that fire may devour your cedars. Wail, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen. Because the mighty trees are ruined, wail, O oaks of Bashan, for the thick forest has come down. There is the sound of wailing shepherds, for their glory is in ruins. There is the sound of roaring lions, for the pride of the Jordan is in ruins. And so what we're seeing is desolation in Israel. Let's listen to David Barron. This first brief section in which chapter 11 is divided consists of verses 1 through 3, and may be regarded as the prelude of what follows. In dramatic style, the prophet announces the desolating judgment that will sweep over the whole land. But while the physical desolation of the land is primarily set forth, there is also contained in it, at least indirectly, an announcement of a destructive judgment of the people. Now, beginning in the next verse, we have the story of the Good Shepherd. Scholars uh, have two schools of thought. One is that Zechariah saw all this in a vision, but the other more popular view is that the Lord told Zechariah to hire himself out as a shepherd, and he actually walked this out. Let's listen. Thus says the Lord my God, feed the flock for slaughter, whose owners slaughter them and feel no guilt. Those who sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich, and their shepherds do not pity them. For I will no longer pity the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord, but indeed I will give every one into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king. They shall attack the land, and I will not deliver them from his hand. So who are the owners? Some say it's the Romans. Others say it's their leaders the Sanhedrin. Now, uh, when we read the next verse, we're going to add the word uh, favor with beauty and the word unity with bonds to make it easier to understand. So I fed the flock for slaughter, in particular, the poor of the flock. I took for myself two staffs, the one I called beauty or favor, the other I called bonds, or unity, and I fed the flock. And so J. Vernon McGee reminds us that a shepherd always has two staffs. 
One is the one with the crook on the top that he uses to pull back the little sheep who are straying. And the other one is more like a club, which he uses to fight off wild animals and even human beings. Continuing now in verses 8 and 9. I, now, again, Zechariah actually fires three people who are under him. I dismissed the three shepherds in one month. My soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Then I said, I will not feed you. Let what is dying die, and what is perishing perish. Let those that are left eat each other's flesh. So who are the three uh, shepherds that he fires? Uh, there are many points of view. We're going to go with Mike Bickle. In one month, Zechariah fired three shepherds. Many theories abound on this verse. The best approach seems to be to see this as three classes of shepherds or leaders that were dismissed, namely the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. Jesus named these three classes of leaders who rejected him. I see the month in Jerusalem leading up to his death when they decided to kill him as the time when they sealed their fate. Let's listen to first in Luke chapter 9. And he strictly warned and commanded them to tell no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by one, the elders, two, the chief priests, and three, the scribes, and be killed and raised on the third day. Likewise in Matthew 26, then the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. Now let's go back to Zechariah and continue. Then I took my staff, beauty or favor, and cut it in two that I might break the covenant which I had made with all the peoples. So it was broken on that day. Thus the poor of the flock who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. So continuing in verses 12 and 13, Then I said to them, if it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages 30 pieces of silver, and the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter. That princely price they set on me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. And of course, we know that that prophecy is fulfilled in Matthew 27 when Judas brings back the 30 pieces of silver and throws them into the temple and then they are then used to buy a potter's field to bury strangers in. Now let's continue to verse 14. Then I cut into my other staff bonds that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And so after the Lord died, there was a lot of strife between the tribes in Israel. And then finally, of course, 70 AD, and they were scattered throughout the world. So now let's listen to the characteristics of, or the chief points regarding the good shepherd as given to us by David Barron. That before the destruction of Jerusalem, Jehovah in the person of Messiah would appear as the shepherd of Israel. That only the poor or the humble of the flock would attend to his word. But the rest, both leaders and people, would reject and abhor him. That the good shepherd should be valued at the price of a common slave. And that people would, in consequence, be given over to the prey of the Gentile powers from without and to civil feuds within. Now, we know, let me say this about the Antichrist, we know that the Antichrist is um, an Assyrian because the first mention of the Antichrist calls him an Assyrian. Let's listen to some evil Assyrians. One, Pharaoh in the time of Moses was an Assyrian, Isaiah 52. 
For thus says the Lord God, My people went down at first into Egypt to dwell there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. 2. Sennacherib, the Assyrian king, plundered the ten northern tribes in 721 B.C. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hands is my indignation. And then three, the Antichrist and Assyrian will come against all the nations that I will break the Assyrian in my land and on my mountains tread him underfoot. That his yoke shall be removed from them and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed against the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out over all the nations. All right, so uh, we have an Assyrian who is the Antichrist. Now we are going to listen to some verses about him in the book of Zechariah. Beginning in verse 15, And the Lord said to me, Next, Take for yourself the implements of a foolish shepherd. For indeed, I will raise up a shepherd in the land who will not care for those who are cut off, nor seek the young, nor heal those that are broken, nor feed those that still stand. But he will eat the flesh of the fat and tear their hooves in pieces. And so... Uh, to understand more about the foolish shepherd, let's go back to Revelation 13, which is frequently called the Antichrist chapter. And we're going to find out in verses 12 and 14 that the Antichrist really does die. Let's listen. Verse 12, And he, meaning the false prophet, exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So here we see a deadly wound, a wound that kills, healed. Now again in verse 14. And he, again talking about the false prophet, deceives those who dwell on the earth by the signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Now, some would say the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived is a kingdom, but that is incorrect. How do we know that? Because... It says to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Do they make an image of a kingdom or do they make an image of the Antichrist? Obviously, they make an image of the Antichrist who was wounded by the sword and lived. And so now I'm going to give you my personal point of view, which we have in the book from the hidden, which is this that the Antichrist dies, descends into hell where he deserves to go at the exact moment it is unlocked in Revelation 9. Let's listen to the sequence of events in the book from the hidden. The beings from the bottomless pit. One, Apollyon is called the angel of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9.11. Antichrist is referred to as the beast from the bottomless pit twice. Since both Apollyon and Antichrist are referred to as having ascended out of the bottomless pit, I believe we can assume Antichrist is indwelt by Apollyon. We know he's not indwelt by Satan since they are seen as separate entities throughout the book. Now let's listen to the final verse in Zechariah 11. Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right eye. His arm shall completely wither and his right eye shall be totally blinded. Stay tuned and we will be right back. You may now order Teresa's 12-part Bible study on the book of Daniel entitled Daniel in the Light of Revelation. This includes the 12-part DVD series and a teaching outline for each chapter, a 12-question test for each chapter, plus the answer key. Also copies of the charts, graphs, and prophecies used on the screen. 
This Bible study is not copyrighted and may be reproduced for your church, Bible school, cell group, or other use. In Daniel 12, 4, he was told to seal the book until the time of the end. It is now the time of the end, and we've been given valuable information by Daniel about what is going to happen. To order the Bible study, Daniel, in the light of Revelation, send $39 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291 with your Visa or MasterCard, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. You may also purchase Teresa's book on the end times from The Hidden. You will understand it perfectly at $4 off the regular price when you order Daniel in the light of Revelation. To order this book in your order, send $49 to Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. Or call 618-281-3291. Or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. And thank you to all of you who include a tax-deductible donation when you order. Attention students of End Time Prophecy. If you would like to understand the book of Zechariah, you may order Teresa's 10-part DVD series, Zechariah, End Time Prophet. This includes an in-depth discussion of the eight visions Zechariah had in one night, detailing the future of the Jewish people from 519 B.C. to the coming of Messiah. Teresa also compares the four chariots of Zechariah 6 with the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Zechariah gives their identity and what direction they go. Revelation tells us why. Then Zechariah chapters 9 through 14 give the most comprehensive description of the Armageddon campaign in the Bible. Included is a notebook with copies of the charts used on the screen. Send $33 to Teresa Garcia, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291. We take Visa and MasterCard at 618-281-3291, or you may order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. You may also add Teresa's updated expanded book on the end times from the hidden final edition for $12, $4 off the regular price. It contains 210 pages of information on the European Union, Middle East, and the end of the age. For the series Zechariah, End Time Prophet, and From the Hidden, final edition, send $45 to Teresa Garcia, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618-281-3291, or order online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com. Next week, we will discuss the very interesting second oracle beginning in Zechariah chapter 12. In the meantime, do pray for the peace of Jerusalem, walk with Jesus, and we will see you again next week. Thank you for watching Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia. You may contact us at Teresa Garcia Ministry, P.O. Box 494, Columbia, Illinois, 62236, or call 618 618- 281-3291 or visit us online at TeresaGarciaMinistry.com You may also find us on Facebook at Teresa Garcia Ministry For prayer requests, call 618-281-3291 or mail them to Teresa Garcia P.O. Box 494 Columbia, Illinois 62236 Be sure to join us again next week for another edition of Understanding the End of the Age with Teresa Garcia